Hi, it's Dougie from Valto, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you all things Microsoft Viva Insights and showing you a demonstration of how it works. So what is Microsoft Viva Insights? Microsoft Viva Insights uses AI, as in artificial intelligence, and signals from existing Microsoft 365 apps. It puts together an overall kind of insight and will offer um, useful pieces of information that help improve individual focus, productivity, and collaboration on a day-to-day -day basis. Viva Insights uh, is, as I say, artificial intelligence-powered assistant that lives inside of Microsoft 365 to give users helpful tips and tricks. It will give advice on how to be more efficient and effective at work and teach them how they can keep their teams engaged. The goal of this service is to help you get stuff done while working smarter through using these artificial intelligence driven insights. Microsoft Fever Insights um, uh, offers a personalized sort of base of uh, based uh, tips based on your overall working habits, as well as those um, of your colleagues um, that they're based on as well. So who you're working with. So it's trying to make um, smart kind of decisions and things like that based on what kind of you're doing, who you're collaborating with, what meetings you're taking part in and things like that. These are individual insights that help you understand what's happening within your business. So let's take a look. So Microsoft Viva Insights is another product which can be easily accessed um, from a tab with inside of Microsoft Teams. If you don't see, you can always click on the three dots here and search for uh, Viva Insights. Remember that you'll only see um, some of these products if you're actually licensed to see uh, Microsoft Viva uh, within your Microsoft 365. So what is it then? So let's take a little look at some of this functionality. So uh, as I say, it, it offers overall kind of insights, but it's also um, an employee kind of engagement. So it also will try and promote things like praising your colleagues. So we can choose to send praise to our colleagues by clicking on the send praise button here. We can see all the kind of praise that we've recently received from others, as well as giving us kind of recommendations that we might want to send praise to, say for working with Hugh recently, um, or working with Claire, collaboration, and we can send some praise, say, great job, Claire, it was really good. Or I might want to send this um, on to, for example, Jade, uh, for doing a piece of work that I thought was really useful. So if I click on the send praise button, I can choose to type in someone's name, or I can select them from this drop down list. I can choose to send where the praise to, so I can say it's an individual chat, or I can show it in a Teams channel if I wanted to promote this to um, other people within inside of my team so they could see what's been going really well. I can choose a title, so it's, it's either something that's been awesome, it's a thank you message, it's a congratulations on maybe passing uh, an exam or a certification, it's achiever, so achieving maybe a difficult project or problem solver for helping us tackle a client issue. Um, but there's a whole host of other things in here. Team player, um, creative, leadership. It's just worth having a little look through all the different ones that you could potentially use. But I'm going to use this kind of thank you. And I might just say, thank you for all your help recently getting our team's work complete in a timely way or something like that. I can set a background color. For what this is going to be so a couple of cool little colors we can pick here and then i'm going to click on send and then that's saying going to um, send that message directly to jade now this will show up as a e-card um, so it will show up like this and she'll get notified to be able to see that that message um, she can also see all the praise that she's previously received as well um, so this is showing me that I can see um, uh, that I've recently sent a praise message um, to Jade. And I can also see my full praise history by coming back into this page in here. So um, there's some other useful kind of insights and things like that that it will give me over time. Um, so down here, I can see um, a focus plan. So three hours of focus time kept in November. Um, and I can choose to book focus time. So focus time is basically going to look at my calendar and try and find slots of time, which are going to be really useful um, to kind of reuse as specific focus. So this is looking for gaps in my calendar um, and, and things like that. It also offers things like um, some guidance on improving your work-life balance as well. Um, so there's loads of little cool little things that this will branch off to. I also quite like this how you're feeling uh, about the day option where you can actually reflect on um, how you're kind of feeling over a period of time. 
So let's say, for example, I can mark this as good, and then I can see my reflection history to kind of see um, wh where I've been kind of feeling, and I can reflect and say, okay, well, I've had a really good period here, or actually, this was a really bad day. Why was that? Um, it might be because I had loads of back-to-back -back meetings and I didn't have time to kind of cool down between those meetings. So by the end of the day, I was feeling really fried and not so good. So this is a very high level, um, but it's a good way of sort of tracking uh, over a period of time. That actually, if I was constantly reporting back that actually I was feeling um, a, a bit sort of sad um, or a bit down or, or sort of um, a bit overworked, I could then maybe think, oh, there's a bit of a pattern here and maybe there's something I can do about it to fix it. Or like with anybody, if, if you're feeling a bit sort of down um, for a couple of days, maybe there's a, a problems with kind of work or even maybe problems at home, um, it can feel like you've been in that period of time for a, for a long time. Whereas actually, if you can come back at this and say, actually, well, it's only been a couple of days, actually. And last week I was feeling over the moon and I've been feeling really good. Then you can remind yourself that it's not all doom and gloom, that you've not been kind of in this way for a long period of time. It's a great way of kind of reminding yourself um, where you're currently at with your kind of overall um, sort of mental health and well-being. Insights also offers some really great tips um, about staying connected with people. So again, it will always promote things like giving praise, um, but you can also see um, there's some uh, specific kind of uh, tasks and reminders and things like that. So there's some tasks here to sort of say, well, um, I asked um, just following up on the blow, do you have any questions? So that's, that's actually AI that's picked up on, on something that sounds like it could be a potential question. Um, it could be something like, oh, um, did you, um, send me that can you send me that document tomorrow or something like that so you can mark these things off say yep this one's been uh done and you can then say yep move this off and it will then put it on uh your kind of done list um so that's a really good way of actually just staying connected with people and just making sure that things that are uh, potentially tasks are actually getting completed and checked off your list there's also another tab which is all about dedicating um, uh, sort of time, so having protected time away from kind of meetings and that sort of thing. Um, so again, you can look, um, you can use this to, to sort of view a focus plan uh, of kind of preferences. So how much focus time would you like to schedule every day? Um, I look for roughly about two hours worth of focus time to make sure that I'm not kind of in meetings and things like that. I prefer to in the afternoon as a lot of my meetings do take place in the morning uh, and we can also choose to sort of don't schedule focus time earlier than a specific time so otherwise we don't want to focus time at five o'clock in the morning for example you can also choose a mute notifications um, so it's asking would you like to silence teams chat notifications during focus time so you can say mute notifications or allow notifications so that's up to you um, if you truly want to get focus time uh, you might want to actually specify um, that, that, that you don't want notifications to come through to you at that point in time um, so insights can help protect your quiet time from work-related notifications. Uh, as I say, you can turn those on and off. Um, and basically, it's looking to help you make sure that you actually get that focus time, which is becoming more and more important as hybrid work becomes more the norm. There's some other really useful areas as well. So things like effective meetings. Um, so you can kind of see from in here, so meeting habits. Um, so uh, here, you, uh, I organized 51 meetings. I were invited to 108 meetings in the last four, uh, four weeks. And you can explore your habits within here. So you can see um, sort of there's no overlap with other meetings, um, high attendance. Uh, I didn't multitask um, whilst I was in those meetings, so I was focusing on the meetings and that sort of thing. So there's some really useful insights because everything you're kind of doing with inside of Microsoft 365, this AI, this Viva Insights, is kind of tracking everything you're doing. So it can be a little bit simplistic at this point in time, but I get a really strong feeling from Microsoft that AI is really going to be the future. Um, so this is something that is going to get more and more powerful over a period of time. There's also an inspiration library, uh, which is all going to give you information about well-being, culture, impact, um, that, that will help be a kind of thought-provoking and inspiration. Um, so take a little look at that um, and some great little pieces of information in there.